passes it an amount. Where did it get that amount? It got it from the text box. So the text box value gets put in a variable called amount. That gets passed to the function convert amount. So now whatever that amount is, is in the argument arg amount. So then we can use that arg amount here in the calculation once we've gotten the rate to determine the converted amount. Notice that the event has almost no code in it. It has code to gather the data that it needs and to convert the text boxes to string and the drop downs to string. It calls a function and then it does something with the result. This code is very loosely coupled. In other words, my functions don't depend on there being a text box or a drop down. If we can supply the values to this, we can use this function. Other questions before we take the next leap in moving this and putting it into a class. Now, as we said before, If our business was some kind of international business and we did currency conversion all over the place, all right, we wouldn't want to necessarily just have one page to do currency conversion. We would want it throughout the application. If we calculated a shipping charge in dollars, we might want to display it in pounds and euros. All right. If we calculate a price in dollars or pulled a value of, of um, dollars from a database, we might want to convert that to pounds or euros. But right now, this code lives on this page. All right? It lives on this page, which means it can only be called from this page. We want to break this out and put it in a class by itself. If we put it in a class by itself then, we then will have a money component that we can plug in wherever we needed it. All right. To be sure on some terminology here, we're going to create a class and later on we're going to create an object. A class is a description for a class of items. A class contains all the properties and methods or functions that relate to a particular problem domain area. All right. In a computer system for a college, there's likely to be a student class. All right. Student class is a template for everything that is the case about students. All right. It might include methods to um, process a graduation form, all right, if, if you're going to graduate. It might include methods to um, calculate your GPA. It might call, include methods to print a transcript. So all the kinds of things associated with students will live in this class and are true for every student. In other words, every student could apply for graduation. Every student could get a transcript. Every student may need to calculate, you know, going to need to calculate their GPA. So these are things that are true for all students. In addition to the methods, a class will often have attributes as well. And these are characteristics of members of the class. So what kind of information do we want to keep about a student? We probably want to keep their first name, their last name, their address, city, state, zip, their student number, what they're majoring in, which could be a list of things, not just one necessarily, and so on down the line. So we would take everything related to a student, all the attributes, all the characteristics, and we would take all the functions or methods that a student can perform 
and would put that in one place. And that's going to be our student component, which means that anywhere we want to do something with a student, we use that student component. And therefore, we don't have to rewrite anything. We don't have to rewrite the calculation of the GPA in three different places, right? Everything is contained in the student class, and if we want to calculate the GPA, we can create an instance of that class, populate it, and ask for what the GPA is. The technical term for putting everything about something in one place is called encapsulation. The idea of encapsulation is that everything about the student is going to be in there. We're not going to have bits of code about the student here and bits of code about the student there and so on. Anytime we want to do anything dealing with a student, we're going to access the same class definition. Now what's an object? An object is a member of that class, an instance of that class. So if we had a student class, each one of you would sort of correspond to a student object because you're, you're a member of the student class. You have specific values for those attributes. So in a student class, we may say that there's going to be a name, first name, last name, city, state, zip, and all that. When we create an instance of it, we're accessing a specific student. So there'll be the, spe the specific correct value for the name, city, state, zip, and so on down the line. So our idea, our idea here is we want to encapsulate all the logic in one place. So if we want to use it anywhere, we just drop this component in and use it. We've been using objects in class all along. All right? We've just been using the ones that are built into the framework. Um, when we create a validation control, there's a class for required field validator. My required field validator 1 is a specific instance of that class that I give specific attributes to. Namely, what's the control that we're validating, what do we want the error message to be, and so on and so forth. So, the code to do that validation, everything about it is encapsulated in that class. It's a component. So when I go and I pop one of those on my page here, all right, I'm creating an object of that type. My object is called required field validator one. It's of type system.web UI web controls blah 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 blah. Required field validator. So that's the class. This is the object name. And then I'm spe uh, uh, specifying specific values, specific attributes for this member of the class. All right. The class says that required field validators have an error message. Well, for this required field validator, this is my error message. The class says that a required field validator needs a control to validate. Well, this required field validator is validating this control. So there are attributes and methods on these class, and we've been using them all along. We've just, just been using the built-in ones. Now if you think about a framework for uh, an application, especially a web application, most of the stuff that's going to be done is going to be visual things, right? Um, in other words, whether you be a school, or a band, or a online retailer, or a nonprofit organization, there's certain things that you're going to have on your page. Like you're going to make sure that they enter in the proper values in the form. So you're going to need validators no matter what your problem is, no matter what your problem domain is. So therefore, that's how those components got created. When Microsoft developed .NET, they looked and they said, what, are, what, do everything, what does everyone do on these websites? Well, they do validation. Okay, I'm going to make a component for it. So I can reuse that component across a bunch of different pages. What we're doing here is no different, except we're creating a class specific to our problem domain that isn't a visual class. 
all right? In fact, when I did some work in another object-oriented language, they would call these non-visual objects, all right? Because a student object, now you could display maybe something from it on a user interface, but a student object is more a conceptual thing. It's not a window or an image or whatever on a page. So we want to create a component, a non-visual component, or a problem domain object or a custom class that relates to this money conversion, all right? Where we could put everything we wanted to about money in one place, all right? Especially, again, related to money conversion. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to File, New, File. And I'm going to say I want to create a class. All right. What do I want to call the class? It's going to be in C sharp. I want to call this class a money amount. And I click add. Now it's warning me that people usually put this in their app code folder. And it's telling me that, and I'll say, yeah, okay, let's do that. So now it put that money class in a, in a separate folder. Now, this is sort of the shell of the class. What we can do is, or what we're going to do is we're going to take and move those functions to the class. All right. So I'm going to go and pull out of here these two functions. And I'm going to do one thing to them. Instead of making these protected, I'm going to make them public. I make them public so the outside world can use those functions. By outside world, I mean an object other than this object. If I kept it as protected, well, we'll see that. It'll tell me that if I kept it as protected or kept it as private, when I went and tried to use it on the other page, it would tell me, no, you can't use that function. All right. So I've moved that code from my default.aspx to uh, the code behind for the default.aspx to my money object. Now, my page doesn't know where to find it. All right. Because I say convert amount, it doesn't have convert amount as a function in it anymore, so it can't find it. So we have to say where it is. And we might say, well, can it find it? It's still in that money amount class. Well, it doesn't know. I mean, we could have 100 different classes, each one of them having their own convert amount method, right? We could have a, a, a distance um, class that converted, you know, meters to feet or, you know, kilometers to miles or whatever. We have a weight class that converted pounds to kilograms or whatever. So it doesn't know what convert amount is anymore because it's no longer in the same page. So we have to tell it. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to say... Money amount... M equals new money amount. Can someone tell me what this statement does? Creating, object. creating an object. I'm creating a member of the class money amount. So in M, I have a variable which is of type money amount. What does that mean? Well, if it was a student, I could do all the things that I could do with a student. I could apply for a degree, I could calculate GPA, whatever. Here that it's a money amount, I can do the, all the things that I can do with a money amount object. Namely, I can convert the amount. And I can say M 
dot convert amount and everything should work as intended. So if I go and run this, and sure enough, still does it complete correctly. But now, I can do other things, right? I can make another page, which I'll do real quick. It won't be an elegant page, but it'll be a page. bunch of <coughs> values in it. We'll go up to four. So now this has a, a, a drop down for one through four dollars. All right, I'll put a label here that says I'll delete everything that I did <laughs> instead. What's the use? So what am I doing? I'm creating a drop-down that has a number of dollars in it. I'm creating two labels, one for euros and one for pounds. And when the user changes this, I want to go and do the calculation.
could say dollars equals what? Where am I getting the dollars from? The drop down. So convert dot to double. Dollars. Oh, I, that's not what I want. I want drop down list one dot selected value. Um, pounds then equals what? Equals M dot. convert amount, and what do I have to give it? I have to give it the amount, which is dollars. I have to give it the from argument, which is zero for dollars. The to argument, which is two for pounds. Oops. Euros, I do this. Then I can say label euros dot text equals convert dot to string. Now, I'm going to tell you this isn't going to work. And I'm not just doing that in case it doesn't work so I can say I told you so. I know this isn't going to work. predicted it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? There's no submit button. In other words, that code that I have to do to conversion, where does that code live? That code lives on the server. When will that code get executed? That code will get executed when the value of that drop-down list is changed and oh yeah, by the way, we're on the server. We've made it back to the server. So what could I do to fix this? Well, the simplest way would be to add a, uh, or one way would be to add a submit button, where I could click submit and that would send it to the server. The server would note that the dropdown had changed and it would do the calculation. Um, another way to do it would be to go and set this to auto postback. What does auto postback means? That means when the value changes, automatically do a submit also. So this makes, makes for a little neater flow in this case. There's no validation here. So I guess I don't need if is valid. All right. So I'm in business. So Again, this page in itself isn't much of anything, but it shows how I now have a common component to do this calculation that I can call from other pages. And it doesn't take a lot of imagination to see how we could build this. We could create a table where you, 
you, when the page load, it had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then pounds and euros in this column to fill it in. All right, we, you know, we could we could take this whatever direction we wanted to, but the problem domain logic only lives in one place. Now, again, a couple things that we could do to improve this, you know, one would be to pull those values from a database. Regardless, we'd only have to do it in one place, right? We'd only have to change that money value or money amount object or class to grab it from the database instead of having it hard coded. So we'd change it in one place. Um, some of these things, again, I'm mentioning because some of you are, are uh, you know, have done objects before. I could make constants for the values of those conversion types, like dollars and pounds and euros, and that would make the, the code a lot cleaner as well. Um, there is one little bug in this. Did anyone spot the bug? Yeah, th yeah, that's not really a bug per se. Again, and that's where if I put a constant here, that would help. But what what is flat out a bug? When the page loads, it doesn't have a value. All right. Why doesn't it have a value? First of all, the server side code produced this, so I was on the server. Pardon me? Nothing's executed at this point. Okay. Yeah, that selected item hasn't changed yet. All right. So how could I fix that? You could do it in page load. Could do it in page load. Okay. And what would I put in page load? I could set initial values, so I'd probably do something like this, right? I'd probably only difference is dollars wouldn't get from the drop down list. Dollars would be simply one, right? Because I know the the value. I probably actually could get it from the drop down yeah, list. Yeah. Now let's see. All right, so now it gets initialized properly. Instead of reproducing the code, the pretty much the same code, could you in the page load uh, set the index, which would then force the code to fire? I don't think so. I don't think so, because the selected index, it, it does have a selected, I, I don't know. You could you play with that and, and try. I, I'm, I don't think you could, though, because it does have an index value of zero when it comes in. I wouldn't want to change it to, like, one, and that would point it, that would initialize the page at two dollars. That would seem a funky way to do it. Um, but this way works. Um, Does anyone have a tissue? <laughs> I'm actually in tears here. Why would we not want to do that? <laughs> because it could, well, you know, the pounds and euros could change. But it yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. We've defeated the whole purpose of going through this whole exercise for just one place to do it, right? Because if something, oh, here is a tissue. <laughs> Did someone bring these to me or were these here all along? Uh, that, again, if something you know, play in your head. If something changes, if something changes, I have to change my class, and I'd have to change that. How many other pages would I have a similar issue for? So it's better to do that. Now, 